Hello Internet and welcome to part two of my Facebook applications programming tutorial where I will teach you how to make Facebook applications and pages and pretty much anything else inside of Facebook. If you didn't watch part one, definitely watch it because in part one we built this part of the Facebook application and now we're going to continue adding on to it. If you remember last time I had little icons down here which were thumbnails for other YouTube videos and how I want to set this up is the person's going to be able to click on those icons and it's automatically going to load the new video right up here dynamically on the screen. So let's get into the code. All right, well, this is where I last left you off, and right here is where I'm pulling in the YouTube video from before, and I'm going to start writing another script, and I'm going to explain this as I go along. There's a lot of JavaScript in here, but it's, like I said, I'm going to do my best to make it understandable, even if you don't know how to program. So what I'm going to do here first is to create a scripting area, and that's all you do. Type in script, and then type text JavaScript, and here I'm going to hide JavaScript if the person doesn't have that available to them, and then I'm going to close off this area right like that. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go grab my thumbnails. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to track where I want to put line breaks. So if I show three thumbnails on the screen, I then want to insert a line break. And you're going to see how this is done in a second. I'm going to create a variable and I'm just going to call it insert a break like that. I'm going to give it a value of one and we're going to see here in a minute. If you want any of the code, it's available underneath the video and it's heavily commented. Then what I have to do is create an array of videos and all this is is a box that's going to contain all of the codes for YouTube, all my YouTube videos that I want to put inside of here. Okay, so I got a copy of all of those codes and if you don't know what I mean, Every video, right after it says youtube.com watch question mark V is equal to, there's a code right here. So I got to copy all the codes for all the videos that I wanted to insert. And that's all this is. It's a whole bunch of those codes all saved in a little box that we call an array in programming languages. Then I'm going to call document write, which is a JavaScript function. And all it's going to do is insert a break statement so that I can have division between the video and where the thumbnails are going to occur. Then I I need to cycle through all of these codes that I put here and output everything on the screen that I need for each one of those thumbnails to show up. So I'm just going to type in 4i in array of videos. And all this is going to do is it's going to loop through all of these guys right here and output different things on the screen. So I want to print an image tag, which is HTML, with the source being the default YouTube thumbnail. And if you didn't know this, if you wanted to get the YouTube thumbnail for any video, just type in HTTP img.youtube.com forward slash vi forward slash and then put in like this code, for example, with a forward slash and then default dot JPEG. And this right here would output that guy right on the screen. So knowing that, what we're going to do is we're just going to cycle through all of these different images and output them on the screen. So what are we going to do? We're going to call document write again, which outputs whatever we say onto the screen. And we're going to say image because if you want an image to show up on the screen, you have to use an image tag in HTML, then class. And this is going to be important because it's going to allow me to make changes whenever this guy's clicked on. So this is just a name that is given to each of those pictures. And then source is equal to, well, what are we going to do? We're going to copy this part right here. Copy and paste that inside of there. And then we're going to close off this quote. See these different quotes being used. And we're going to go plus and we're going to call array of videos. Let's spell it right. And that's the name for this array up here. And then we're going to end it with default.jpg. So let's just copy that. Put that inside of there and close that off. Except we need to put in the double quote here that's for source. So we'll put that inside of there. And then another thing I want to do is I want to create an alternative text inside of this guy. Put the double quotes inside of there and then leave the single quotes which is going to encapsulate this whole entire string. And I'm going to say plus and I want to copy this again. So I want this stored in my alternative text and you're going to see why in a minute. Okay, so paste that inside of there and then say plus. And then we're going to close off that and forward slash. This is going to close off our image tag that we're creating. And there you go. So this is going to output each one of those individual thumbnails onto the screen just by cycling through all of these different codes. That's what's going on with that. Now what I want to do is I, I want to insert a line break 
after every three videos. So that's this is where the line break variable that I used before. And I'm going to say after every three, I want to insert a line break. You just need to use these opening and closing curly brackets anytime you're going to want to do that. Document right, right like that. And I'm going to say insert a break is equal to zero. And then right after this, I'm going to say insert a break. And whenever you put two pluses, what that does is it automatically increments it. So it's going to set it back to its original value of one. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm setting it to zero, and then I'm setting it to one. And then this is going to continue to insert line breaks so that all the images are divided onto separate lines. So we can come in here and get rid of this. And then I'd also like to put some space in between the videos and the thumbnails and this bottom part right here. That's real easy to do. Right after script, I'm going to come in here and put some additional line breaks. If we file save that, and I use a tool that is called FileZilla, it's available on every single operating system. What I'm going to do is I made my changes there, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to upload those changes into the directory that is on my website. And whenever I do that, if I reopen this guy and reload it, you can see now that I have images here on the screen. However, currently if I click on any of them, it doesn't do anything. So what I want to do here is I want to set it up so that when I click on these thumbnails, that the video up here is going to automatically change. Sounds like it's really hard, but it's really not. So let's jump back into our code. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up into my style section and I'm going to edit those thumbnails. Now down here, whenever I was creating these thumbnails, you can see here I have class is equal to YT thumb, which is YouTube thumb. Well, if I want to edit those images inside of here, I'm going to type in YT thumb right here, which is the class name. And that's the reason why there's a period in front of there. And I'm going to close that off. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go margin is equal to five pixels, which is going to give me a little bit of space. And then I'm going to say margin, and this is going to be five pixels every 20 pixels. And I'm going to say margin left is equal to 22 pixels. So there you are. I just styled those thumbnails. And I'm going to file save it, jump back into FileZilla, upload it, and then reopen this guy. And now you can see that my thumbnails are distributed across the screen, but they still don't have the capability of changing the video if I click on them. They are going to have that capability in a second though. So now what I'm going to do right under here where I am defining my jQuery library inside of a scripting area. Again, if you're writing JavaScript code or in this situation, I'm going to write jQuery code. You have to put it inside of script tags. And what I'm going to say here is this is a jQuery command. It's real simple though. I'm just going to say whenever the document or the web page is ready or loaded, I want to run a function right inside of here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. And it's going to call it link to YouTube. What this guy is going to contain is the URL for YouTube, any YouTube video. I'm going to use this over and over again. So I'm just saving that inside of a variable. Then what I want to say is whenever the image or the thumbnail is clicked, I want to call a function named change the video. It's going to change dynamically the video that's shown on the screen. Well, in jQuery, how you do that is put a dollar sign and inside of quotes, thumb, UT thumb. I just showed you that a second ago. And I'm going to say bind, which in essence is going to say any clicks on those thumbnails are going to result in a function being called that we're going to make here in a half a second called change the video. And that's all that does. It says anytime a thumbnail is clicked with this class name, YT thumb, and there's the click, I want to call this function. Then what I need to do, let's scroll this up so you can see it better, is I'm going to create a function again. And guess what it's going to be called? Change the video. And I'm going to have to close off that function. And then I need to close off this jQuery area. And how I need to do that is I need to close this curly bracket and I also need to close this brace here. First thing I'm going to do is close the curly bracket and then close the brace and put a semicolon inside of there. Then I need to get the alt value for the thumbnail that was clicked. Remember down here whenever we were putting all these thumbnails in right here, alt. Well, the value that I'm going to get is taken from array of videos and this is the code that I want to get. So I want to get the code for the video that I want to display on the screen. So I'm going to come in here and go var. I'm going to say video code is equal to. Then I'm going to type in this and all this is is a reference to the thumbnail that was clicked. That's all that is. So it's saying this thing that was clicked, I want you to get me the attribute for alt. 
or the value of alt. So I'm saying the button that was clicked, I want the alt value, and I want to store it in a variable called video code. Then I'm going to create another variable, and it's going to be called new video, LOC or location. And then I'm going to say link to YouTube, which is this guy right up here. I'm building a URL. That's all I'm doing here. And then I want to follow that up with video code, which is this guy right here. Again, building a URL. And then I want to end it with question mark. W mode is equal to transparent. And I went over what that did in the previous video. And then I need to assign this new YouTube URL that I just created to the source for the video that is on the screen. And that will cause it to change dynamically. Now, however, this guy is not a class, but an ID. And if you scroll down here, you see ID YT video, all right? Whenever you wanna go in there and make changes to something with an ID instead of a class, you put a hash symbol in there and you type in YT video. And then if I wanna change the value of the video that's being shown, again, I'm just gonna type in ATTR or attribute and say this time that I wanna change the source new video location and I'm giving the source this value that I just created right here in this variable. And if we file save that, open up FileZilla, upload it, and then jump back over here and reload this guy. You can now see that when any of these thumbnails are clicked, that it's automatically dynamically going to change the video that you see up here on the screen. And also we put some space in here so that people will be able to comment. There's a link to this page right here if you wanna go check it out and there's a link to all of the code underneath of this video. Feel free to use it in any way possible. I'll be making a ton more of these videos over the upcoming month. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.